Hello all, today we will be moving on to unit 2 of the operating system in which we will be covering what is a process, what are the different states a process exists and what is a process control block and the context is switching of it. Moving on to the first one, what is a process? So, before moving on to see what is a process, let me first tell you what is a program. So, we all, all of us will be writing a program, right? So, what is that program? Program is nothing but the data and the instructions put together, we call it as a program. And this particular program will be present in your secondary memory. Now, when this is being loaded, it moves on to your RAM. I mean to say it is on your primary memory. So, when a program is present on the primary memory and it is being executed by the CPU, that we will call it as a process. So, a program process is nothing but a program which is under execution. Now, we will see what are the basic differences between a program and a process. So, when I move on to a program, all the instructions in the program will be present in the programming language, whereas the process contains the code, but it is in the form of the machine code which can be understood by the system. Coming to the second difference, program we call it as a static object whereas process is nothing but your dynamic object and this particular program resides in your secondary memory when it is being loaded into your main memory then it becomes your process because it is given by to the CPU for execution and the period of this program is for unlimited duration of time whereas the lifespan or the period of this process is limited. And coming to the last difference, program is a passive entity, whereas process we call it as an active entity. So, this is what a process means. Now, you have, a, you have written a program given to a CPU for execution and it has been converted into a process. Now, when you go for your process memory, the process memory is being divided into four parts here or we can even call them as attributes of the process memory. So, we have your text, we have the data attribute, we have the heap attribute and the stack attribute. Coming to your text attribute, whatever code you have written in your programming language, when it is being compiled by the system, you will get an object code. So, that particular code will be present in your text attribute. Coming to the second part of your memory, which is nothing but your data, this contains all the variables, global variables, which are initialized or uninitialized. So, in this example, temp, temporary variable and the count, which are global variables where one is initialized and other is uninitialized, are being stored into your data part. And coming to your heap part of your process memory, this will hold all the variables which are being allocated using your dynamic memory allocation functions. So, here you could see that you are allocating a memory using malloc, memory allocation. So, that will be dumped into your heap part of your process memory. As we move on to the next one, which is nothing but a stack. So, stack here will contain all the local variables or the return address of the variables here will be dumped onto your stack. So, these are the four major parts of a process memory. Now, we have seen a process and we have seen what attributes or attributes of a process memory. We will move on to the different states a process exist. These are the different states a process exist. One is your new state, ready state, running state, wait state and the termination state. Now, we will see each one of them in detail. Now, new state. Whenever when a process is being under construction or we are initializing a process, so that particular process will exist in a new state. It is not yet ready for execution. So, the creation of the process, once the process is being initialized, it is, will be in your new state. Now, when a process is being created and loaded into your main memory, it moves on to your ready state, meaning that this particular process is ready for execution. But this process is not yet allotted to the CPU, it is just waiting in the main memory for its turn to execution. Now, we go for the third state where you have the process which was in the process of creation is now ready into your ready state which is present in your main memory and assume that it has been taken by the CPU for execution. So, since the process is now under the control of the CPU, it moves into your running state. 
while it is in the running state the process may require some input output operations or you may get some other process which is of higher priority than this so then you make this particular process to wait for some particular time so then the process will be moved from running state to wait state now seeing all these things so this is a state transition diagram of a process starting with the new when it is ready to be executed it will be moved into your main memory and it is present in the ready state when this particular process is taken by the cpu you will call it is in the running state and when it is in the running state it can be either moved to your ready state or it can be moved to your waiting state depending upon your input output service or depending upon your interrupt if you are able to perform the running process perfectly without any waiting or moving back to your ready state it finally moves to your terminated state and one more important thing let me make it very clear when a process is waiting is in the waiting state assume an event has been occurred it will not be directly moved into your running state but it has to be again moved into your ready state and from the ready state you can jump make a process to move into your running state so this we call it as a state transition diagram of a process where the process will be moved from one state to the other state now we have seen the different states of a process now wait where the information related to the process has to be stored somewhere right so that we call it as a process control block so process control block will have all the information related to a process so we can even call this as a task control block coming to the first parameter of your pcb or process control block it is a process state i want to know what is the state of the process what is the current state of the process it can be new it can be ready it can be running it can be waiting or it can be terminated coming to the next one it is your process number you have n number of process that are been created so for that each process will be given a unique id and that we call it as a process number as you many have n number of process process id will be starting from 0 to n minus 1 next you have your program counter we have seen in your computer organization where program counter will actually contain the address of the next instruction that is to be executed and here we have a set of registers while the process is under execution it may use some registers for storing its input or output data so the set of registers that are being utilized by the process in the execution and you have your memory limits where you specify what is the starting range of the memory needed for the process and what is the maximum range memory limits of that particular process and what are all the files that are being accessed by this particular process additional to this you can even maintain the accounting information of a process meaning that what is the amount of cpu usage done by that particular process all these things so all these are nothing but your process control block now in the same process we have another topic here related to context switching so context switching here involves that when you have more than one process as you may have process x and process y initially process x was been executing by the cpu and after some time because of an interrupt or higher priority process ready this particular process will be in your off state and the cpu will be jumping to process y so cpu which was initially executing process x will stop its execution and move on to process y so context switching is nothing but a mechanism where that involves switching of the cpu from one process to the other process so context switching will is applicable only when you have more than one process when you have a single process there is no need of context switch because the cpu time is totally allocated to only one particular process now we have seen what is context switching it means that cpu will stop one process and go on to other process but why you should do that the reasons are why you are executing one process you may get a higher priority process so what you have to do you have to stop the current executing process and take the process which is ready for execution or the process which is been currently executed by the cpu requires some input output service so till that time the cpu cannot be simply idle 
So it stops it and takes the next process which is present in your ready queue. And you have some interrupt generated by the system in that particular case also the CPU has to stop the current execution process and move on to the next process. So these are the reasons why we actually go for context switching. Now when the context switching happens as a user I only know that the CPU will move from one process to other process. But internally what will happen you have a process control block. Let me take an example and explain it to you all. This is process P0 and this is process P1. So initially CPU is executing your process P0 and in between the execution it got an interrupt or a system call which is to be serviced by the operating system. So then this particular CPU will stop executing your process P0 and loads the data into the PCB. What PCB contains? What is the process number? What is the state of the process? What registers are being used? So all the data related to P0 will be dumped into PCB0. So each process will have its own process control block created in the operating system. After you save your PCB, then you want some other process to be taken by the CPU, right? So that particular process details are to be whatever you have in PCB1 are to be reloaded. So you have to get the data from PCB1 so that you can start executing your process P1. And assume while you are in executing your process P1, same situation occurs where it got an interrupt or a system call. What has to be done? Make it very clear that you have to save the current state of the process which you want to stop. So I have saved PCB1. Now I want to execute process P0. So what I need to do? I need to reload the data from PCB0 and start executing my P0. So these are the internal steps that are to be taken care by your operating system when the CPU is getting switched from one particular state, one particular process to other particular process. Now, we have seen what is context switching, what are the reasons why we go for context switching and what will happen in context switching. But why do we, what is the advantage of context switching here? Though you have a single CPU, this particular context switching will give an illusion to the user that it is multitasking. But in reality, multitasking will not be done because the processor is only one. So each process will be given some amount of time and the context switching is done in such a way that the user thinks that all the process are being under execution. But when it is executing one process, the other process will be idle. But coming to the disadvantage of your context switching here, the time required, what is the amount of time required? I need to first save the data of the process which I want to stop and then get the data from the process which I want to start. So in this, this time we call it as context switching time. So in this particular time rather than loading and uh, reloading the data, the CPU will not be performing any of the operational operations. So in that case, so if you have more amount of data to be stored and to be saved, you have more amount of time that will be taken care by your context switching. So in the next class, we will be seeing what are the operations that can be performed on a process.